Hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of Bar Shifts and Bullshit. We are on episode 30. This is a nice little milestone. Mm -hmm. And of course we're going to uh, call it Too Comfortable. Uh, guys, we, we've been working in this industry for a hot minute and we've, we've come across a lot of people that it's always really good to be comfortable with your surroundings. That, that kind of goes without saying. When you work with somebody that you, uh, you do really well with and you have that synchronized setup, being able to bounce around and like you know each other's next steps back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. That's great. But we want to discuss about being too comfortable with the shit that you say in front of guests or the shit that you say to coworkers or even upper management. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna lie, I've, I've, I've had these issues. Like I've known myself. Like I've, I've been vain and cocky enough to where I told my boss, like, you know what? You need me. I don't need you. Uh huh. And I think we've all had that. Yeah. Scenario. It's, and, you know, um, actually, we've talked about it um, mm -hmm. on an earlier episode, the infamous shock was with us. Yeah. And we were talking about how we used to harass our boss to no end when we cooked together. We used to torture that man. Which, <laughs> <laughs> which one? And mean? it wasn't just him. It's not like you were just picking on him. Yeah. No, right. there was quite a few of them. Yeah. But that's when, how it when is me and Shock, When me and Shock are together, we terrorize everybody. Everybody. <laughs> like, everybody's miserable. Even the servers <laughs> coming in to get their food. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. It's a thing. Yeah. So, in the, honestly, I kind of miss that. I, uh, I really do. I miss picking on people to that extent because, you know, back back in those days, people weren't as soft and yeah, they but, were. but we've been running into some random scenarios here lately. Uh, not me personally, but, like, I've seen it happen at other locations and other bars. And you've been seeing it a lot here uh -huh, lately where bartenders, uh -huh. bartenders have actually been telling guests things that are quite unorthodox. Yeah. And we just wanted to kind of... Kind of get everybody in check and let you know that, like, if you're not in a dive bar or you're in a clean setting or a family or in a business, mm -hmm. that, or fine dining, or fine dining, there are certain keywords and curt and like certain slangs and certain notions that cannot be said in yes, a bar. Yes, there are. Now, yeah. I understand <laughs> that there's those people that are like an open book, you know, you can read them, they want to say everything that's on their mind they tell you your whole life their whole life story but there's a time and place for that which we happen to say that a lot there's a time and place for a lot of things um but these are some of the things you don't do right so we'll go through a list of some of the words you don't say don't say cunt at the bar. <laughs> like, don't say the word cunt at the bar like, don't say motherfucker don't say motherfucker unless you're referring to a blue motorcycle because mm. that's and like you really can't say that unless they order it like that. Yes. Which, uh, if you're curious, um, a blue motherfucker or a blue motorcycle. Adios, motherfucker. Or adios, motherfucker. Uh huh. They, the we just call it AMF. Or Everybody AM, knows. Yeah, or AMF. That's all the same cocktail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, unless you're trying to be a douchebag. Or you're trying to make it a point that you can say fucker for whatever. Like, which is cool in a dive bar. Like, people order it that way. I mean, sure. If you have a bunch of motorcyclists all around you, go for it. How about it? But if you're in a family setting. Probably not the best place to say it. <laughs> Probably not. Maybe yeah. you got to tone it down a notch, too, yeah. so that other people can't hear you. But honestly, like... When you're in these weird conversations or whatnot, it's it's fun to be modest. It really is. It is. So when you're modest in, in a lot of uncomfortable settings and uncomfortable conversations, you kind of let a word slip here and there. Uh -huh. It gets the guests excited. They feel like they won. Uh -huh. But if you come fresh out of the gate, barreling in, like, you son of a bitch, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, it just, it kind of queezes people. It makes them squeamish. Uh-huh. Yeah. So in, in my experience, this is how I feel about it. Because, like, if, uh, like, uh. If some chick that doesn't know me would be like, well, what can I get for you, douchebag? I'm going to be like, ah, oh, nah, I'm good. <laughs> like, I know like, you ain't talking to me with that attitude. You know? Exactly. And there's also not talking about your sex life. Yeah. Like, why would that even enter into polite conversation when you're working? It shouldn't. It doesn't. And it does happen, don't get me wrong. Uh, I've had I've had guests. It definitely happens. There, but that's a different conversation. That's a different situation. These are these are usually guests that are usually extra flirty, mm -hmm. and that are trying to make a notion to see where they would end up in a certain scenario, right? Right. So sexual sexual conversations and sexual prowess in certain in these conversations do happen. They do. 
Yeah, it happened yeah. to me like a couple of weeks ago, and I don't even mean for it to be steered into that direction. Yeah. But the customers kind of took Pushed hold it. of that conversation. Yeah, there you go. And it, and it happens, but like I said, if you be modest in the conversation, just don't uh-huh. be like, oh, like definitely SM is the way to go, or don't, like like condom with uh, condoms, whips, chains, the, the words, yeah. that and all that, like and all its greater glory. You don't have to like throw all that information out there. Be modest with the information. You're really good with this actually, because <laughs> you do little quips here and there. I do, uh, yeah. but they're slight. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like somebody will be like, I like getting beaten. She's like, you know what, I. Like, I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. Like, and I, I got that's this it. title right here. It's for my flights, but we can use it for other things. See? <laughs> it's really it's really subtle, and it's really easy, real small quips. Like, it's playful, it's mm-hmm. fine, it's still modest, but you're not going to extra, extra details that people really don't need to know about mm-hmm. you. No, <laughs> no. You're not supposed to be talking about your life anyways. Um, maybe about the customer's life, sure. Yeah. But that's where we're. Uh, or your experiences in certain scenarios. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. Yeah. But they'll ask you for your experience. Yeah. Well, and that's a bartender's job. <clears throat> yeah. A bartender is supposed to have a story for virtually anything. Anything. A story or an opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and we've discussed we don't do politics, we don't do religion at the bar. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can find ways in, ways out, do that. Um, but, you know, like having these conversations is great. Just make sure you can ease your way out. And, don't put yourself in a weird, awkward situation that you don't really want to yeah. be Yeah. But if you're giving your whole life story, there's a lot of things I actually have a beef with on that whole problem. Like, if you're giving your whole life story, you're telling people that you don't really know, you know, where you live, uh-huh. what your lifestyle is like, uh-huh. who your family are, you know, and a lot of things. Like, I don't want random people coming up to my kids and be like, oh, you're that guy's, you're that guy's dad. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, I, I don't want, I don't want that for my young ones. So I don't advertise it. Like mm-hmm. people ask me if I've got kids, I'll tell them I've got, I've yeah. got kids, you know, and tell the stories about them or whatever. But like the minor details of my home life will never be brought to light. No, no. mine either. And, and of course, you know, a few things slip through the cracks here and there. But you know, as a bartender or as a server, say you get those specific types of customers that want to know everything about you because they're attracted to you. Mm -hmm. That's how you develop stalkers. Yeah. Like, (laughs) I understand repeat customers and, you know, they're there because you're there. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But never give too much of your own information away for people to stalk you down. Yeah. Well, and like, and there is a difference between a regular and a stalker. Yes. And and we'll go, I can go in a little bit more length of that. So I've got a bartender and my favorite bar that I've, I've, she's been my bartender for over 10 years. Yeah. We were actually just discussing this last night. <laughs> but, uh, she is definitely unavailable for a lot of reasons pending. And she <laughs> has been for the last, uh, last 10 years. And it's been made, brought to my attention by everybody, especially her. Like, she has no problem telling me, like, like I'm not available. <laughs> And she's and she's awesome. She's really really cool about this because she's always she still flirts with me. She still plays around plays whatever. Around. Mm-hmm. But she lets me know she's like in a different like she doesn't say it like that. She doesn't ever say what I always say. But like <laughs> <laughs> she always uh, like I'll be like when are you gonna try like when are you just gonna turn uh, like turn loose just turn all this in, trade all this in and just uh, pick me and she'd be like and uh, she'll start laughing every single time and she'd be like I would she's like maybe one day maybe one day. And I was like, <laughs> always tell her like 10 days or 10 years and uh she'll st- and she'll laugh every single time like 10, <laughs> uh, 10 days and then i'll look at her and be like you're really gonna make me wait no, wait to wait to the 10 years aren't you? Yeah. and she'll crack up she's like i don't know baby i don't know <laughs> but yeah but i talked to her last night and i was like you do realize like you've been my bartender for over 10 years and she was like oh, she's like i don't even want to think about the math i was like do you realize, you do realize you're the most consistent woman <laughs> In my life, and she, and she started dying. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, she's like, I. Was, and she just started laughing, just kind of shaking her head. I was like, that's pretty sad. I'm happy about it. Oh, <laughs> and I she, know. she was like, yeah. She's like, I love you. She was like, I love that you come in here. <laughs> but yeah, at the same time, like it's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. But that's what a bartender can be to people. <laughs> I mean, sure. And and it's it's awesome. Like if you think about it. Yeah, well, straight up, she's lasted more than both my marriages. Yeah, <laughs> like, there you go. Yeah. See, she's never lied to you. She no. hasn't cheated. She hasn't stolen from you. She's always been friendly. Yeah. 
she's definitely I've definitely bought her I don't know I didn't buy her anything I like I gave her money though like you get, you've definitely paid, paid for her I've paid for a lot of drinks paid for a lot of drinks I ain't gonna say I'm an alcoholic I'm a professional uh, yeah <laughs> <But like, laughs> we are professional drinkers mm-hmm. <laughs> had a lot of practice guys yep yeah, a lot a of lot. practice a lot of a lot of bad a lot of bad a lot of good like, and I mean mind you it, it gets really easy to be comfortable with certain bartenders well and and people push boundaries all the time yes they like, do that's that's what they do mm-hmm. like everybody pushes boundaries to see what what's okay with the next person you know mm-hmm. uh you know, a dirty conversation, yeah, that happens all the time. You just slip something in there to see if people are still comfortable with it, and if they don't shy away from it, then they're comfortable. Yeah. Like, that's how it goes. That's it. But, that's how you set boundaries. Mm-hmm. Like, when things get a little bit too far, you give a weird look and be like, ah, that's a little too much, calm down, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And you set these boundaries so you know where that lies, but you keep inviting more and more and more and more stuff. And you you're s- yeah, you're still supposed to maintain some type of professionalism. Always. Like, it, as much as most of my really, really fun bartenders flirt and play around and all that yeah. stuff, they still, like, know how to be professional, mm-hmm. do all that, and have a good time, and set boundaries. Like, And that's a natural thing, actually. It is. I'm not trying to go to a bartender because they're easy. No. That, that, that is not what I'm looking for when I go to a bar in the first place. Um, I like my drinks. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I ain't going to go, to the, go down there and just pick somebody up. No. <laughs> Why? What makes you think on this planet that I'd be trying to pick somebody up at a bar? Like, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> then there's, you know, just handing out your information, handing out your, your telephone number, just, you know, the whole list. And, and these are the people that you should stay away from. Yeah. Because now it's not just inviting unprofessionalism and anything else, but like, where do you expect to get at this point? Yeah. Well, and some people got, see, some, and you got to be aware of it. Some people just got some balls to, yeah, like, and to just do. be hyper aggressive in certain situations. And I'll give you an example. Uh, we we have a mutual friend. She's a lot younger. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very cute. And uh, she used to come out and drink with me a lot. Uh, she kind of dialed it down a lot and found Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if I, I wouldn't go that far, but like she's definitely she's definitely calmed down, calm down in the like the last few years that I've known her. But she used to come in and um, she used to come in and get drinks or whatever. Well, there's this little dude. I say little dude. <laughs> like, there's this dude that was like really grabbing on her, like well, wouldn't leave her alone, kept grabbing mm. on her, kept grabbing on her. And she was real, really strong with her boundaries. She's like, no, like I'm not going with you. Yeah. Like, no, I don't. I can buy my own drinks. Very, very, like everything that we coach, she mm-hmm. was doing it to a T, making it very clear. Mm-hmm. And I noticed it, and I'm a substantially bigger guy. I'm not huge. I'm a pretty, I'm, a, I'm <laughs> substantially bigger. So, but this, this girl I tower over. Yeah. Like, she probably comes up to my chest, maybe. Or like. I doubt it. Maybe. Maybe slightly shorter than Yeah, that. slightly. Uh, so, this dude is like grabbing on her and grabbing on her, and I come up behind some and I, and, uh. I like I, I just kind of like hug her from the back. Yeah. Like she and she knows it's me because like my tattoos are very distinctive, and she and I'm a, like I said I'm a bigger guy. Most people know my hugs. Uh uh-huh. you know? So I come up and hug her, and I look at dude, and I was like, Hey man, we all right? And like, and he looked at me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Is there something something you need? Something something I can help you with, bud? And and she's like looking at me, laughing, mm-hmm. and dude and dude looks at her, looks at me, and then just kind of walks away. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And then I just kind of look at her. And I was like, you good? And she was like, yeah, no, I was great before you walked out. Uh-huh. Too. Like, real cocky about it. So, uh, so at the same time, where people are hyper aggressive, it's also good to have friends. Yes, you know? definitely. So, a lot of these situations kind of play out and work out. Um, but, and, you, but, like, in a work setting in that type of environment, I, it also depends on what type of place you work for. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know we've established the differences between dive bars, family friendly, and fine dining. Well, and even in dive bars, and I've been to a few, they've never been overly grungy. What? Like the bartenders. The bartenders. I mean, uh, a couple of them have been, especially that one location we worked at. Mm-hmm. Um, the, a couple of them were. Fair. Yeah. Fair, but, um. <laughs> fair, but at the same time, I don't think they were like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. But, but like, since then, they have toned it down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it happens. I mean, hell, it's happening at our locations. Yeah. 
And well, and I, I preach and I preach and preach. Modesty is a tool that can be used behind the bar. Mm-hmm. Like give, uh, like give a little, take a little. Give a little, take a little. And exactly. people fight for more all the time. They do. Like, and people want more and more attention, so they they come around more often. That's how you get regulars. Mm-hmm. You know, that is. You you start good conversations. You don't get overzealous with it. Like you don't get weird. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll make and offer too much information, or. You know, like, you just don't. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't do it. <laughs> like, you don't at all. Yeah. So, uh, just kind of, I mean, just keep all that in mind. Modesty is a tool that can be used at great length. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and uh, like, you can hold your own. So, like, keep in mind your language, the way you say things, the way mm-hmm. you present yourself. If you present yourself as trashy, people <laughs> are going to see you as trashy. That's exactly <laughs> it. And yeah. that's all the type of attention you're going to get yeah. is trashy. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and that's... It's kind of one of those things you wear really, really, really short uh, booty shorts or whatever and, th- and like, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I'm not saying, like, for me or for me personally, it's just something that's really, really cool to look at. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not. I like, know. We can all appreciate a nice ass. <laughs> ass sits. Ass sits. <laughs> but, but at the same time, like, you got to keep it, like, Keeping something sacred is always important. That's mm-hmm. why, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Actually, me and a buddy of mine was talking about loyalty this morning. And uh, and this is kind of straying off the to- topic a little bit. But um, we were talking about, like, a, a loyal person, like a loyal woman mm-hmm. is is almost non-existent in our day and time. Yeah. Well, like, well, me and my buddy are convinced that that's not a real thing anymore. Yeah, it's uh, hard. Yeah, uh, it's a constant competition with the next dude behind you or in front mm-hmm. of you. And we feel it, and like, and he's he's been married for over ten years now. Mm-hmm. Like, so he's he's really kind of looked out on that front. But we were talking. I was like, Nah, man. Uh, it's so rare to find somebody that loyal. Like, and loyalty, like, because you'll always find somebody better than me. And I tell people this all the time. I was like, If you're looking for somebody better, you'll find it. Uh-huh. And if you want to find somebody that's better at this than me, you'll find it. Uh-huh. But. And like, then if you don't give a person a chance to be loyal. You're not gonna find it. Like right. if you're sitting there making people choose, that that's and that's wrong. Yeah, like, that's, that's wrong. wrong. Like if they're showing loyalty between you and one other person and this, that, and the other, and don't want to cause waves or whatever, you're really putting that one person in a weird predicament. Uh-huh. I hate that shit. I, know. I hate them so much. It's annoying. But uh, I was telling him, I was like, you ever find somebody that's just loyal, like enjoy, like mm-hmm. enjoys what you have and appreciates everything they've got? That's gold. Mm-hmm. You know, it like is. that, like and. Uh, and that speaks volume. So, like the modesty there, and like the hidden gems, uh, you give a little, you get a little bit, you get a little bit, and then that's like, and then stop. And then to be able to trust somebody because you know they have a conscience and they know how to make correct decisions. Yeah. Well, and that's just kind of one of those. It's just like I like I said, it's all non-existent. But it's like what people do in their everyday lives when they're not at work. Well, that kind of spills over into their workplace, especially if they work a lot. Mm-hmm. So you can tell what type of work ethic someone's gonna have, and we've had this conversation on a previous recently, episode. Recently, recently, actually. And um, a lot of that are key factors when hiring somebody mm-hmm. too. Like as you get to know them, that's why you have that period of time. Where they're temporary. Yeah. You're supposed to have at least 30 to 90 days yes. of employment. Which I have yet. I've worked at a lot of places now. And I've yet for people to take advantage of that I situation. know. <laughs> there's like, not oh. that many people. Although um, we just did. Oh, word. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a very good reason. But they didn't allow somebody to change and work through the things that they needed to work on. Instead, they were just like, oh, that's it. Oh, word. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Word. Uh, but well, and we had, ooh, uh, ooh. <laughs> so I've been in situations. I'll say it like this: I've been in situations where we've hired somebody, not necessarily at the location that I'm uh-huh. in now, <laughs> but in other locations where we've hired somebody that's blatantly lied on their application. Oh yes. And now, upper management. Or in the scenario, upper management would feel obligated to keep them because mm-hmm. they've already hired them for the position. Yeah. But you're supposed to have a grace period. That's yep. what that's for. You have that time. But she told it. So this person told everybody that she was an experienced bartender. Mm-hmm. And as soon as soon as she went and grabbed the first bottle, you I knew she wasn't bartender. Tell. Like you can smell it, man. 
Like, you can yeah. smell it. Like, and, like, she grabbed the first bottle. I was like, she doesn't like bartending. And then my buddy asked her, he's like, hey, like, how do you make an old, smell like an old fashioned? And they were like, uh, and just like, blank. <laughs> so one of the easiest, oldest cocktails known to man, you should know how to make it. Yeah, or have a variation of how you should make Definitely it. Definitely a variation because the new ones nowadays, it requires modeling. But the old fashioned ways, there's no modeling See, I whatsoever. Even, I don't even like modeling. Yeah, old fashioned, I, I hate it. I, like, I hate it with a passion. Uh, my recipe is real simple and it's just, and people love it. It's yeah. really just a, it's a lemon and orange peel and you twist it into the glass after you put uh, put your shot of whiskey or shot of bourbon, your choice. Uh, you put it in there and then you put demerara mm-hmm. or a simple syrup. I like demerara because it uses sugar in the raw. I use cherry juice. Or cher- I do add cherry juice. I add fifth, uh, I do filthy cherry juice. Yeah. Like a dash of it. I'll make those twists. I'll stir it up and then I'll put filthy cherries on top. Mm-hmm. And that's how I send it. Well, I always ask a person, do you want do you want it on the sweet side or not sweet side? Do you want it bitter or not bitter? See, I'm way more clever about mine. I, uh, I say clever, but I, I'm way more vague. Also. Yeah. I'll be like, because like they'll ask me for an old fashioned. I'll be like, do you want a good old fashioned <laughs> or do you want what they serve in the book? <laughs> no, because I need to know what I'm about to put in it and how to make it. And those questions that I ask, whatever their response is, tells me which one they're used to. See, uh, you're right. Uh, you're right on accommodating a guest. Yeah. I'm right on like following the history behind a cocktail. So what I do, I'll be like, do you want a traditionally, like this is how mm-hmm. it's made cocktail and like, and make them think like, well, it's not make them think it's a true statement, but I'll make them think like, Oh snap. Like I'm getting, yeah. an OG drink, you know what I'm saying? I know. I, I had a couple come into the bar last week and they both asked me for an old fashioned. They looked over the counter to see what I had. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I asked them which bourbon they wanted me to use. I only have two. And um, they're like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, okay, now, do you want it sweet or not sweet? And she, the girl was like, oh, shit, she's professional. <laughs> but that, that was honestly the only question I had to ask them, especially when she made that comment. I was like, okay, then I'm going to make you, the, I'm going to make it for you the traditional way. Mm-hmm. She wanted it on the sweet side. He did not. I didn't use simple syrup at all. Oh, really? You uh-huh. don't, it oh, was just the cherry juice. I mean, cherry juice is good. Like yeah. it's stout and potent, so it works. Mm-hmm. Especially like if you use filthy cherry juice. Exactly. Like really, so really for good. hers, I used half an ounce mm-hmm. of cherry juice. For his, I literally did a splash. Word. You know, it's funny as I've like sent I've sent guests your way <laughs> because like because like they'll come they'll go to like random locations all over yeah. our area and they'll come up and they'll start talking to me and they'll be like, oh man, be like it's so hard to find somebody who knows how to make this drink uh-huh. so hard to find somebody that knows them how to make a traditional whatever right exactly and, uh, same, and uh, this happened actually on uh, five or six different occasions and i'll be like you know what if you want to expand on, like expand on your horizons like and spread it out a little bit and go somewhere else with a change of venue mm-hmm. i was like go see my best friend over at this bar go stop in there i was like she'll <laughs> have to make it i was like almost as good as mine <laughs> <laughs> see and i send them to you yeah. i was like if you want an out of this world <laughs> old fashioned you got to go see him over here oh yeah that's and so they're funny. like, really? And I was like, oh, yes, it's unlike any other. And it's funny, you, you kind of set me up one time. Like, uh, <laughs> they asked me for, asked for me by name, and I was, yes. I was in the zone. And, and I was like, oh, I was like, crap. Because like, they, <laughs> they asked me by name, and I looked at them, and I was like, I don't know who these people <laughs> are. And I felt like an asshole because I was like, oh, I know I served them at some point. So I'd go up to him and I'd talk to him. I was like, what's up, man? <laughs> and he'd be like, he'd, he'd start laughing. He's like, oh, and he's like, I'm good. I was like, all right, man, can I get you anything? And, and like, he was real shady about it too. He was like, oh, I was just thinking about getting an old fashioned or I can't remember. He, I think she got like Manhattan. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, and they just started laughing. Uh, and you were like, do you know who I am? I was like, I was like, oh, I'm really, really sorry, guys. I have no clue what your names are. <laughs> and they just bust out laughing. They were like, you don't know us. She's like your buddy, uh, buddy from across town. Told us you're coming in. <laughs> so like, they were, they were fucking with me. <laughs> they played weird. right into it. <laughs> yeah, they did, man. They were all about some good jokes. No, oh, just like the older ladies that you sent to me over at the bar. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> but no, they were awesome. They didn't stay with me as long as they stayed with you because you actually served them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, oh, they were great. They were awesome. Like, yeah. I, I know who you're talking about. Because <laughs> like, it was were... just like a month ago. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. It was yeah. a, real, a real sweet old woman too. But I mean, there's there's definitely a way 
to get comfortable with people and to get rid of the being too comfortable with people. Yeah. Those are prime examples. Mm-hmm. We weren't comfortable with them at all whatsoever. Yeah. We're, because we sent them to each other. Right. right. <laughs> so oh, we're yeah. like, oh. shit, what do we have to amount to? Yeah. <laughs> what oh, do they do that yeah. I can't do? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we just kind of, yeah. But that's a good way to network too, guys. Like if you got really, really good friends at other locations. And, and I do this to her all the time, mm-hmm. but I, I do it. To, I have some really, really good friends over at the restaurant next to me that I'll send them to. I'll send them business oh, yeah. all the time. So if you've got friends in other bars, definitely recommend them. Mm-hmm. Uh, pitch out their name and all this stuff and be like, you want the best cocktail ever? You want this cocktail? You want like, you know what? I don't have the ingredients here, but this bar, this guy knows how to kill it. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Like it all, it's all great. Yeah. Like, and that's a good is. way to pass it on business. And, and, um, your your buddies appreciate that. Uh-huh. Like I appreciate all the business you send me because you know I need it. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I don't live off hopes and dreams. No I need cocktails. Like I, I need for people to come and pay for it. So and then you know, like, like and we can go on for days on, <laughs> on like on all this stuff. But being too comfortable with your guests is definitely something that you need to kind of che- keep yourself in check. Yes. Make sure you don't get too prideful on different things. Oh, like, good lord! Like don't talk to your boss like they're your subordinate. They're mm-hmm. not there to serve you. No. Like they have, they have a bar to run. They have a restaurant to run. You know, they yeah. have different hurdles that you're not allowed to know about. So keep that in mind. And now what in the world made it okay for employees to talk back to their bosses? I don't know. When that, this started, that's got to be the whole, I'm too comfortable with my position part. Good so, Lord well, Almighty. Don't get me wrong. Like I've got some really, really cool bosses. Like I enjoy working on with the people that I work with. Yeah. But uh, and I pick on them all the time. I, I do the same. Yeah, but there's a difference between picking on them and looking at them and just be like, I'm not doing what you're telling me to do. Yeah. That is the biggest slap in the face you can do to somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I wouldn't do that to an employee. Well, you know? now you can't even trust your employee to do what you need them to do because they're gonna think they're better than you are and that they could probably take your job from you. But that's not what the bosses are looking for. Yeah. They're looking for someone to be able to do what they're told to do and do it great. Right. Well, and not not to hate on it. If you know the job, you know the job. That's great. Uh, kudos, I'm excited for you, blah, 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 blah. But at the same time, like, you still got to show respect to the people around you. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to be shitty and be like, I can do their job better than they can, blah, 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 that's great. I'm glad you can do that. It's not your job. Let's no. worry about yours first. If it was your job, you'd be doing it. Right. Or you'd be somewhere else where they're paying you to do it. Or you wouldn't be complaining about the job you already have. Yes. Like, you know, and all of that in a professional setting, by the way, does stack up. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you're professional all the time, you do the job that you have to the best of your ability. You don't bitch. You don't complain. And you don't talk down to people that are to anybody. Like mm-hmm. that's not okay. But you don't talk down to your bosses like they're like they don't know what they're talking about. That's not that doesn't make you look good. No, it like, does not. Yeah, it actually makes you look like an asshole. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, it doesn't make you look boss. It doesn't look, make you look like you're stronger or smarter mm-hmm. or any of that stuff. No, no. like not talking, one bit. Yeah, it makes you look childish. Is what it really, really does. And we're looking for consistency, someone that can ma- maintain professionalism and do their job correctly. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, so, uh, all of that being said, uh, I, I think, like, modesty, not giving too much information is, like, the base, uh, best key. It is. And language. But, yeah, in language. Uh, speaking of which, I've heard a lot of fire at your new re- uh, at your <laughs> restaurant. I'm really, <laughs> really excited about it. you got new, uh, you got some new employees that are doing really, really well. Yes. Wanted to give a special shout out to those people that are just killing it at your location. Yeah, they are killing it. Uh, yeah. They are working their butts off to kill it, too. Uh, it was, it's really exciting. I hear about it a lot. I see it on social media. Uh-huh. So, uh, kudos to you guys that are doing a freaking immaculate job down there at your location. <laughs> but guys, we love you and can't wait to hear from you. We'll see you next time.